now that we have stacked our image of the North American Nebula, um, we're going to process it. And the first thing we do is we open it up here in Photoshop. And you notice that there is no histogram. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to come over to mode. It's a 32-bit pithar now. We're going to change it to 16-bit. Close your gamma. You're like, well, what about this one? Yeah. The HDR toning plus histogram. Hmm. And you could, but nah. Local adaptation makes it look really weird. So yeah, we all we all do exposure gamma. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're also going to do a light crop. Um, since this camera has back focus halfway decent, we're not going to do a major crop. We're only going to crop mainly for stacking artifacts. If this was my Canon RA, which is a full frame camera, um, I would crop it a little bit more. The duplicate layer, we call this IL for initial levels. You can call it whatever you want, but this is what I call it. I like to use abbreviations because I don't like typing. Um, so IL, initial levels, and what I want to do on my initial levels is complete so I was attempting to do by keeping my histogram at around 25%. And that is, bring this down, but here about eight. I'm not gonna touch the highlights, I'm not gonna touch the mid. Bring in black point up. Um, to make it a little bit darker for our color balancing. And before we create a layer for color balancing, we're gonna come down to layer, adjustment layer, threshold will enable us to get our points by this all the way up where we can see nebulosity. I don't want to go too far. You, all you'll see is white. We come over here to the eyedropper tool. Right click it, color sample. We want five by five average. We're going to zoom in points where we think there might not be nebulosity. But this being Cygnus, North American Nebula, there's nebulosity all over. Dark in there, dark nebula. And is, we know all this is kind of dark nebula, but there's still some dust in here too. So um, Normally I would do four points. We might as well do four points. You'll be able to see two once. We start stretching. I'm gonna bring this down. Let's go to a bright star. Now there's two bright stars. There's one. Close to the center. Probably the one we're gonna look at most of it. Not too red. Um, we could use this one too. But this one's also kind of. Kind of good. It's, it's not bad. But this one is actually a lot closer to the numbers that I want. And so we're going to use that one and you'll see why in a minute. Duplicate layer, CB, color balance. And you can type out color balance if you want. Or <laughs> close your bulb. Levels. Instead of messing with the RGB, we're going to do each individual. What we're going to do here first is bring this white point the highlights to 48. The Trevor Jones thing that I picked up and it's honestly never steered me wrong. 48. Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard. Astro photographer. Probably a better teacher than me, but watching this video, not his. So 248 across the board. Now, our lowest panel is red, so we're going to bring everything down to that. Close there, but there did not change. Which is blue doesn't have very far to go. Six, 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 seven, six, five, seven, six, nine. Close enough. Here it doesn't have to be perfect. No, 
it's not to be perfect at all. And you'll see why, because we're going to be color balancing throughout this whole, throughout this whole feel, we're going to be color balancing. We call this one stretch. Now, there's two real ways to stretch um, in Photoshop, curves and levels. Um, if you were going to do a level stretch, bring this up like this, hit OK, back to level. Bring this back down here and your stretch. The problem is, though it doesn't make the stars very big, it is it accidents these halos way too much. And we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to do a curve stretch. We want to do it a couple times. And we'll probably go about halfway. I'm not, I, I want, I'm keeping it this way so you can see the star. Um, probably go from right. See the halo isn't out matching the star as it was with the level stretch. All right, one problem with this image, I don't I don't like this orientation. So we're gonna flip it. Personal preference, right? Now we're stretched. Now we are going to do a gradient. Now this is another optional. Oh, it's gonna go. Uh, this is another op. This is an optional one. You don't have to do this. Um, I like doing it though. A lot of things. Oh wow, it completely changed everything. And what it did is it helped balance the histogram. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't, right? It's kind of like almond joy. Sometimes you like a nut, sometimes you don't. Um, here, you might like it, you might don't. Don't worry about it, we're good. You don't have to worry about your histogram at this moment. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen in a couple steps where we're going to be clipping heavily on the red channel. We'll be able to fix it. And, and that's a basic thing. So we're going to keep the gradient here um, just because I think it benefits this video. And what we're going to do next is we're going to do our starless layer. And we're going to filter our Theastro star exterior. The other option here, obviously, is to use Starnet++. There's a new version out that's actually, I think, a little bit better than Star Exterminator. Um, Starnet++ was the original. I mean, there was other ways to take out stars, but Starnet++ kind of um, streamlined it a little bit for astrophotographers. Then Star Exterminator came out. Everybody's like, praise the Lord. This is great. And it is. It's a really good tool. The problem with Star Exterminator and the original Starnet is that if there was really bright filaments, like uh, say for Cygnus Loop, for example, like West round Western Veil um, or Lobster Claw, where there's some really bright roundish nebulosity, um, Star Exterminator and even Starnet, the original, would mistake that nebulosity for stars and take it out. Now you can mask and keep it in there. You could do a lot of things, but Starnet 2 um, actually generally a little bit better. Um, but again, you don't run into that with with every every nebula you take pictures of. Um, and I'm not running into that here with North American. So we're just gonna do the basic star, star exterminator. And now we have a starless image. And now you're like, Jared, we do not have a star mask. How are you gonna get your stars back? Well, I could always undo this and have my stars back. Or we can come down the gradient here, create another layer. We'll call some stars. And we're gonna come up to image. Apply image, I'm gonna hit layer starless. Um, you're gonna start, if you haven't been on here, you're gonna start, it's gonna start on multiply for whatever reason or something. We'll start, yeah, we'll start, it's gonna start on multiply. We're gonna select subtract, keep scale at one, offset at two. And bam, we have our start. Now from here, we'll, 
we can mess with our star layer before we make it our final one. We just make a copy. And you can do camera raw filter. And you can adjust. Like, you know, you have orange here, right? You know, it's too orange. We can bring down the red, bring down the orange. You don't have to, right? But we can. Um, the good news about curve stretching and removing early on is your stars aren't overly accented too much. Now, based upon your filter, they can have some off colors. I always, always take out magic. Um, but here, we don't really have to do anything. Um, another thing you can do, and this will become even more, this color range highlights 88, 89. Um, I'm actually going to do 8580. Don't want it. Um, like this. See, it didn't select everything, right? So what we could do here is invert this, and then run Star Exterminator again. And get rid of these really small ones. I'm not going to do that though. We're going to do. It takes too long. We'll make them smaller. So we're going to modify expand by two pixels. Even though we're on a star mask, I'm still going to feather it. It's just a habit. I don't really have to. Then we're going to go to minimum. I like to go between 0.5 and 0.8. Um, some people like to go 1, 1 1.1. Some people like to go a little bit more. Even though it's gross. We're going to go 0.8. The important thing to remember here is to it okay the difference we'll move this on top of starless do starless still on stars copy and we're going to hit linear dodge add and now our stars are back on our image and we're good to go now to process our dso we're going to duplicate this layer starless layer hold us in clarity since we removed the stars, and since we don't have deconvolution here in uh, Photoshop, what we're going to do is we're going to use raw filter. Back up the basic, and we're going to use texture clarity and dehaze. So 20. Come on, 20. Again. Both contrast down. I love contrast. Now, if we were doing t deconvolution in like Pick and Sight or even Cyril, we wouldn't worry about necessarily doing clarity, especially that aggressively. And it's not really that aggressive, but we wouldn't do it that aggressively. Um, now we can do our level stretch. We're not going to stretch it much because we're going to do some other things. I'm going bring, to bring this up a little bit. Then we can bring our black point down just a little bit. Right here is noise. Okay, everything here is noise. This is here because of blue and aqua. Okay, so we're not, we're not worried about it. Um, now we're going to do a raw camera filter. We can call this raw. Uh, this is really, in many ways, your one your first opportunity to kind of play with the data a little bit if you wanted. We're not going to play with too much. We're just going to go 0.35 up. More contrast. I'm actually going to bring the highlights down. Shadows down. Whites up just a tad. Vibrance up. Our saturation. Oh my God, what did we just do? Just clip, like, terribly. It's okay. Now, we're going to adjust levels again, but this time more for color balance. Right, so our blue and green channels. And we'll see. Our red, our red, our red's clipped. All right, everybody. 
your way down. Bring it. Bring it. That just kind of accentuates red being clipped even. Well, this one DSO, we're going to use what is kind of like a, a nuclear option kind of for astronomy tools action. Enhance DSO and reduce stars. It's not going to reduce any stars because there's no stars there. But it will enhance the DSO itself. And blah. So color wise, I'm pretty happy. But we need to fix we need to fix this red channel problem. Call this raw color. And we're gonna go into camera raw filter again. Then on color mixer saturation. Um, you might get fixed it with of bringing but we're not going to fix it. And what it is, it's just green blue, gray is blue. Bring this. I'm going to bring aqua all the way down. I'm going to bring blue about. There we go. Still have some weird peaks. And the cool thing is we can actually bring our blue and green channel all the way across, right? Let's do that. Let's go back into levels. Here's our red. Here's our green. Now we essentially have the color that we want. Everything's rebalanced. Um, red is huge, but again, look, it's a red image, right? So that's to be expected. There's a lot of red in this image versus anything else. So we're going to keep this as is. Um, now we're going to do a boost. It's not really necessary here. We're going to show you anyways, though. What you do is you do a boost and then boost copy. And down here you hit layer mask. Up here, this is where I told you about color range. Uh, I'm gonna move it back to 88, 89. So that's what I wanted after this. Hit invert because it's the black stuff that doesn't get affected. It's the white stuff that does here in Photoshop. Create a mask. We're gonna hit Alt, click on the mouse, and now we're on our mask. Go to adjustments and curves. Uh, since there's a lot of black in here because there's a lot of hydrogen alpha, we don't have to move this that much. Now, one thing you can use this for too is to see if you have any artifact points along your edges. We do have a little bit, right? So we have here and here, there, there. Um, Typically, it doesn't matter if it's that, like it's not going to be noticed. But if you want to crop it out, you can. Um, after we do our curves to get where we want it, we're going to come on the blur. We're going to do a Gaussian blur. This helps with the blend. 0.0. Go. Go back. Now, I'm curious. You can see it here. You can see this right here. Now, we haven't done noise yet, right? So some of this could be noise, but typically it's not. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and crop that out? And what we'll do is here. So Crop it out. We still have a little bit there, but I ain't worried. 
My corners are always messed up. I'm always going back in and fixing them. And that's not going to be part of this video. So, all right. So now we've got our layer mask. I'm going to go to curves. And we're just going to bring it down some. Usually 120 output, 135. Put lazy. Do it like this 135. Get the preview off. See the difference. You can see. Pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice difference. If it went 115, 140, we're gonna try to keep it. The reason we go one, you know, every five you go down, you go 15, 40. I think that's even better. That's as far down as I go. Um, and where I got this from was AV Astronomy, Aaron over at AV Astronomy. Um, he did a video on this. He had somebody else show him, teach him, and um, method, and that works really well to help bring out the hydrogen alpha, but it also helps tame your background um, a little bit. If you have some brighter areas, it helps you tame it a little bit. And you can also you can also take control over those areas in Photoshop um, by by doing masking. And I do if you don't know how to do masking, merge it down. Um, I do encourage you to watch some videos on how to do mask, select mask, um, use, use those tools and maybe, maybe we'll do some videos on that at some point too, but it, it's a, it's, it's a really important tool that really makes Photoshop very powerful. You can also do mask and pixel site and it makes pixel site very powerful as well. So we've, we've got our boost, we've done our color. We're we're pretty much where we want to be now. We still have noise, uh, which we're gonna, we're going to take care of in a minute. But first, I want to do another small clarity adjustment. Um, and this is not going to be as aggressive as earlier one. Go back up to basic, right? We're going to do ten. In, in, to general contrast. Not really happy. That came out. Look. Now we'll do our noise. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call this a noise X. Is once again RC Astro. Close this down. Um, I typically like to go 60 10. Um, the reality is, if you have to use more than 60, um, you probably should take some more exposures. Um, this is six hours on a North American nebula in heavily light blue skies, and 60 10 is going to be enough. Um, I could have ran it twice. I don't need to run it twice. I could have ran it, you know, after the first raw before we did the DSO, enhanced DSO, but I don't need to. Um, and so, and you'll see, let's take the stars out. Now you see all this white, these white marks here? Those are stars that didn't get removed in the star exterminator. Um, so you know what? Let's 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 take them out. Video isn't taking too long. Um, take them out. Make it clean. A cleaner image. Um. So because we didn't overstretch our image when we did the first starless image, um, there's still going to be some stars that are present. Just like there's there's those smaller stars in our stars part of the image, there's going to be smaller stars that are part of starless image because they're just there, right? And the more you stretch, and the more you enhance, the more they come out. And so, 
don't be afraid to run whatever you're using for get rid of stars again um yeah if you're using starnet and you're using photoshop you might have to save it and then bring it in starnet and then bring it back into photoshop and run, you know do all that stuff it's worth it um to clean up your image as much as possible and when you're doing this this is a very non-invasive this is very non-invasive um technique right so it's, it's not like you're 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 being doing anything so you can see right and then what i would normally run is a deep space noise reduction um with astronomy tools action this kind of helps the kind of helps in here I mean, there's obviously some stars, but you can see that that fuzz. There's still some noise there, but some noise, some noise. Okay, right. There's still some stars there, but again, some of it's just not gonna hurt us. One more thing to do, and that's contrast. And I, I know what I said earlier that I like contrast. And we like contrast layer. And like we did with our boost, we're just going to duplicate that and make a contrast copy. Then we're going to run local contrast enhancement with astronomy and tool action. Um, and again, this is all stuff that's available within Photoshop. So you technically don't need these actions. You just need to know what these actions are doing. Um, then you can create your own actions. My wife is a photo editor, creates her own actions all the time. I'm too lazy, so I paid the 25, 30 bucks for the action. So this is this is at a hundred percent, and a little much for me. I like contrast. It's a little much for me. Some people love this. A little much for me. I'm gonna move down to two percent. I like that a little bit better. All right, and then what I do is here I merge it down. I rename this contrast layer to contrast. 50% or whatever opacity I left the last one at before I merged it down. Um, you can go further down, you can keep it further up, doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, this is it. This is this is essentially our final image. Let's see. Point. Once you do your initial color balance, by the way, you really don't need these two. Um, that's our image, North American Nebula. Um, down and dirty, six hours in Bordel 8 skies with a me series 6000 triplet, 80 millimeter triplet APO, uh, CWO ASI 2600 MC Pro, and a and Leah ALP T five nanometer dual band narrowband. Um, six hours in, I believe, one evening. So, yeah. We got we got nice color we got good detail we got nice contrast nice shadows and um we did a quick less than 30 minute edit and you know two to three minutes of that edit was dark exterminator twice uh, noise exterminator once um doesn't take long to to do a decent quick process in Photoshop, you have some sort of idea of what you're doing. Obviously, we could do a lot of deep dives into this. Um, but, you know, it's not not really necessary. Don't We don't need to do that. Um, you know, we could, there's still some noise we could take care of if we wanted to. We could, done, we could have done more with our stars. You know, we could we could actually bring our stars out a little bit more if we wanted, right? Like brighter stars, we could bring up brighter stars. Um, I've actually never done that, so I'm kind of curious. 
you know, but we could do brighter stars. That, that might not, that might be an option, especially since you, you know, let go of your stars. Um, so early in the process. Um, the cool thing about this is no matter what software program you use, the general idea of, of processing is the same. You stack your images, you do your initial crop. So if you're using Pixel Site, you know, you're going to do your dynamic crop. Um, you're going to do a color calibration in Pixel Site or Serial. You can do a photometric color calibration, which you basically enter in the coordinates of the object that you took. Um, and you enter in your focal length and your pixel size, and it searches the internet, finds the database, and enters those colors in. Um, ironically, every time I've done that and picked the site or Cyril, and then I've come back in and redone it my way here in Photoshop, the colors are pretty much the same. But it's quick and easy. It's like done in 30 seconds, right? Um, unless your internet's really slow. You know, then you do a background extraction, which is your gradient removal. Um, and you do deconvolution, which is your sharpening, which is our clarity. You do your star removal. Um, you do your histogram stretching, right? You do all this stuff. Um, it's the same principle. Um, you do noise removal. It's the same principle, right? Everything is the same. Pixel Sight does it in a different way. Cyril does it in a different way and incompletely. Um, Photoshop does it its way, right? Or if you use, I guess you could use PaintShop Pro. You know, I don't, I don't know how plugins, or you could use Affinity, I think. I have Affinity Photo, never using it. Um, but yeah, um, the one thing I will note is if you are going to purchase plugins, um, specifically for astrophotography, don't buy Topaz. Um, because the Sharpen doesn't do anything for you. Denoise will ruin your image. You might get denoise after after you remove the stars, but if you have stars in there, it just destroys it. Like even in the lowest settings. Every now and then, it, I get lucky. I do use it sometimes for planetary photography. Um, after I've done wavelets and registacks and stuff like that, but typically, stick with uh, RC Astro's Gradient Noise Star X Exterminators. They're really good. Um, Astronomy Tools Actions are really good um and you know you can use them for, for many different things um if you get noise exterminator and star exterminator and you have starnet and you have astronomy tools actions you get away without having the gradient um those those would be what i would recommend and so but yeah i mean I'll be honest, I think this came out better than my first initial process. So, um, and because I think it came out better than my first initial process, uh, I'm not going to show you my first initial process. <laughs> but I think it's on the Instagram. Anyways, I hope this helps. Um, and if there's any more videos you guys want, let me know. Thank you.